right, it's a cruel, cruel summer. Section 2.7, absolute value functions. I'm going to do some absolute value equations today. Here we have the parent graph, y equals the absolute value of x. We're going to go ahead and see what that looks like. Um, we're going to do it old school way by making a little t table. We're going to put some numbers in. You always want to put some examples of negative numbers. You always definitely want to know what's happening at zero. And then also put some positive numbers in. All right. So if you plug in all of your x values into that function, um, if you plug in a negative 5, absolute value of negative 5 turns out to be positive 5. Plug in a negative 3 comes out positive, plug in a negative one, comes out positive, plug in zero, still zero, plug in a two, you got two, and then four, and then seven. If you plot those points on the graph, this is what it looks like. All right, and that is going to be our parent graph for absolute value. So basically the original uh, graph for absolute value. Notice um, it doesn't curve like a parabola does. It actually has a corner, a real vertex with a V shape there at zero, zero. Uh, and then there are straight lines that go up. So this is literally a letter V. All right, now let's go ahead and move it around. Here's the general equation of an absolute value. We learned in the last lesson where the a, the number that you multiply in the front, it does something to the graph. It actually makes it skinny or wide, skinny or wide. Remember when the a is a nice big whole number, it actually makes it skinny. And when the number is like a small fraction that's less than one, um, then it makes it wide. All right, and we'll go into that a little bit more. It has something to do with the slope. Um, so just be aware of that. <clears throat> the H that is inside the absolute value bars, um, remember that moves the graph either right or left, depending on if it's plus or minus. And then the V, whatever number is added or subtracted to the end, actually will move it up or down. All right, so let's go ahead and do some examples. Here's our first one. Y is equal to the absolute, absolute value of x plus 4 minus 2. Okay, that plus 4 actually moves our parent graph 4 units to the left, and the minus 2 actually moves it two units down and here's what it looks like there it is so it's moved left four and then down two but it still goes up it still opens up like a v all right not too bad here's another one let's see what some of these things do the negative in the very front hmm if you think about it, it does reflect it across the x-axis. So instead of a v going up, it's now v facing down. Uh, I'll skip the two-fifths for right now. Um, the three moves the whole graph up three units. All right. But now let's go ahead and look at the two-fifths. The two-fifths is a fraction that's less than one. Uh, when that happens, then, <clears throat> then the graph gets a little bit more wide. And if you think about it as slope, rise over run, it is 2 over 5. So that's going to be the slope when you draw it. When you draw it out, it uh, kind of automatically gets wider. Here's what it looks like. Notice that the negative made it flip upside down. I moved the 
three up three units because that's what the plus three did. And then the two five, two over five, I just went down two and then over five. So I'll count right now. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And then I did it to the other side as well. Oh, down two over five. And that's how you get it. And obviously when you draw it out, it looks a little bit wider than the parent. And that's what we wanted. All right. Let's do one that says tricky. I mean, it's not too tricky. It's basically the same thing. The only thing different is this plus five, which it's tricky only because in the general equation, the plus five was at the end. So now I'm putting it in the front, which sometimes tricks people, and that's why I put it in the tricky section, but it shouldn't. It just means that the whole graph is moved five units up, and then it's still a V going up with a slope of two over three. And there it is. Goes up five units and then up two over three, up two over three in both directions. All right, so the only trick is sometimes that five can move to the front and that doesn't change anything. All right. And we're already at our last slide for the day, going backwards. What if I give you the graph and you have to come up with, with the absolute value equation? That's not too bad. You always start at the zero, zero, and then see how much you move to the left. It looks like you move to the left four and then up three. So moving to the left four means you put it in the parentheses and then up three means you put it outside of the parentheses and then we're trying to look for the slope this one you have to be really careful it looks like you go up one over two up one over two up one over two so the slope looks like up one over two here it is there's the plus four that means you're going to the left Here's the plus three, that means you're going up. And then there's the one and a half, the slope of the uh, lines. All right, so there it is, absolute value functions. Go ahead and try it for homework.